Welcome. Thank you for joining me today in the Wells Tech Garage. I'm glad you could make it. Today, we're going to be talking about scan tools. And we're going to be talking about the differences and some of the benefits and the, the, the drawbacks of some scan tools and uh, just what to expect from anything from a cold reader all the way up to a manufacturer specific tool. Now, I kind of compare scan tools to uh, the difference between scan tools um, to the Ford guys or the Chevy guys. You know, everybody has their brand. Uh, some people like the Snap-on, some people like the Autel, some people like the Bosch scan tools. It really depends on the person, you know. Just like those miller Lite guys and the Bud Light guys, everybody has their brand. So scan tools are no different. A lot of tools will do the same thing. Some have benefits, some have drawbacks. That's just, just the way the industry works. So I want to talk today just about a few of the scan tools that I have in front of me and where scan tools have kind of come from to where they're going now. And then I want to get into the live data and PID information that a scan tool can give us and how that can help us to diagnose a vehicle. Now that's something that in the past we kind of haven't gotten into very deep. Um, and that's something as a technician that can com commonly be overlooked. Data information on a scan tool can be invaluable on diagnosing cars. Sometimes if you just pull a code and you go right for the sensor, sometimes it's hard to get to, sometimes the connector's hard to see, hard to back probe, you gotta pull diagrams, you gotta do all this different stuff. Sometimes it's just easier to go in and see what the computer will tell you. See if you can get some sort of baseline information to be able to know where to proceed. So that's what scan tool live data and paid information can do for us. So we're gonna show that today. Um, I have two different vehicles in here today to show some live data on. We have an O2 Corvette Z06 and we also have a 2013 Ford Taurus with the 2.0 EcoBoost. So we're gonna talk about some of the data on those and uh, talk about these scan tools in front of me. But before we get to the tools in front of me, we have to give away our t-shirt. This awesome t-shirt right here. So here's your chance to win this. So up on the screen, you'll see the question for the day. It says here, technician A says mode six data is only for automotive engineers and a technician should never have to go in there and use it. Technician B says a scan tool's live data shows exactly as what the module is reading from the input or sensor. So the scan tool's live data is gonna show exactly what the PCM is seeing uh, from the sensor. So if you look at a map sensor PID, the scan tool's live data is gonna show you exactly what the scan tool is reading from that map sensor. So choice A, technician A is correct. Choice B, technician B is correct. Choice C, both technicians are correct. Or uh, um, D, neither technician is correct. So submit your answers on the right side in the chat box or if you're watching out on our website on the chat box that is below the video. Submit your answer to win one of these awesome t-shirts. All right, so let's get into scan tools now. So scan tools have kind of come a long way, you know, as cars progress, as the technology in cars progresses, as do the tools that we use to fix and to diagnose them. Back in the day, in the 80s and early 90s, there were OBD-1 scan tools, and this is an OTC, Enhanced Monitor Scan Tool. This was a tool you would use to diagnose an OBD-1 vehicle. Now you can see that's what it looks like, but it has a couple different cables here on the end. We have our OBD-1 connector, which is very similar to the OBD-2 port, but you can see we have a positive and negative lead here, and that's because OBD-1 connectors were not fed power like an OBD-2 connector is. That's something that was standardized with OBD-2. So in order to power up our scan tool, it either needed to be hooked up to an AC wall outlet, an internal battery, or with a connector like this. So that was way back in the day. Scan tools have evolved from there. As we got into OBD-2, you can get something like this, and now this is an older one. This is a code reader. You can get code readers that are about this big now with a cable attached to them, and all their goal is is to pull generic OBD2 codes. And now when I say generic, that's got a huge meaning in our world. Generic codes are gonna be the codes that range from P0 up to P1000. Anything over P1000 is gonna be going to be considered a manufacturer-specific code. So when OBD2 was mandated, there were generic codes set aside. So like a P0301, cylinder one misfire, P0171, lean code, you know, that kind of thing. That's what a generic scan tool will pull. 
it'll pull that code information, number, and the related information to it. So if it's a 171, it would say P0171 on the screen, and then it would say Bank 1 Lean. That's not going to give you any data, though, and that's kind of a drawback of a code reader. Now, a code reader's benefit is typically a fast startup time. You can hook it up, get your code, and at least have a direction to go. Now, remember, that's a good point. The code that you're getting is only giving you a direction to go. It's not a code to replace a part. We need to be diagnosing cars, not just uh, throwing parts at a code. So you get a, a misfire code, you know, it's not particularly related to a coil or a spark plug. It could be an injector or something wrong with the cylinder itself. You know, you get a purge solenoid circuit code, it might not be the purge solenoid. So that's when you got to kind of use your testing procedures as well as some live data that you can get out of a full function scan tool. So here in front of me I have two full function scan tools. I have our, our Snap-on Modus and our Snap-on Veris. And people are uh, biased towards certain scan tools. Um, just like Ford guys are biased against Chevys and Chevy guys are biased against Ford or uh, the Miller Lite guys don't like the Bud Lite guys. You know, it's, it's all kind of the same and, and scan tools are no different. Um, people like their Autel scan tools, people like their Snap-on, they like their Bosch, their OTC. But really a full function scan tool's main job is to go in and give you as much information as is available on the generic side and also on some manufacturer specific stuff. Now a full function scan tool like these two as good as they are, they don't always offer all of the information that a uh, manufacturer specific tool can. This here is a Tech 2, this is the GM scan tool, this is the older one, and this would hook up and this is what a GM tech and a GM garage would use. Now this is going to give you the most information available, it'll give you the most options, most functional tests, and then it'll also include some reprogramming and that kind of thing. That's the benefit a full function scan tool has is its ability to be in sync with the manufacturer. A generic scan tool, like, a, like the Snap-ons, like the Autels, they have to buy that information, they have to research that information, and they have to build all their stuff themselves. So while they can be very, very good, they're not going to offer 100% of the things on a, say, a Ford diesel that a Ford IDS scan tool would offer. Or say you're working on a Toyota, the Toyota TechStream would offer more information to you than potentially than a full function scan tool. Now, full function scan tools have come a long way over the years. They're very, very good, but the still never going to beat the manufacturer specific tool. So a few um, different examples of manufacturer specific tools. You can get a tech stream for GM. You can get the DRB3 for Chrysler, the IDS for Ford. Uh, the Kia GDS, and you know, the list just goes on and on. Every manufacturer has their own scan tool, and that's just the way the industry works. So if you work on a lot of Ford diesels, maybe you'd want to get an IDS. If you work on a lot of GMs, maybe, you know, invest in a Tech 2 because of the amount of information that you can get. But that's not to say that these tools are slouches. And same with the, the Autel and the OTC and the Bosch and that kind of thing. These tools are very, very good at what they do. And we're gonna show that here in a little bit. We're gonna actually go ahead and hook this Varus up to a 2013 Tor Taurus with a 2.0 liter turbo in there. And you'll be able to see all the information that you can pull on that. And it's just very, very helpful in our diagnosis. And I feel like that's something that we've kind of not touched on enough in here is the live data that we uh, pull on cars when we're doing diagnosis. Live data can save you tons of time. So that's what we're gonna show. So that's basically our OBD1 scan tool, our OBD2 code reader, and now there are some code readers that you can get for a couple hundred bucks that will pull codes and give you some live data. But again, that's gonna be a couple hundred bucks, and then you bump into the thousands of dollars ranges for these full function scan tools, and they range greatly in price from the, you know, maybe thousand dollar mark all the way up to eight to ten thousand dollars for a scan tool. So they're a huge investment, but the, the time and information that you can save with a full function scan tool is uh, completely necessary being a tech. 
Now we can bump into a little bit newer technology, and this has been around for a few years now. Everybody seems to be carrying a smartphone around in their pocket nowadays, so why don't we utilize that resource that we have in our pocket and hook up to the car and see what kind of information we can get. And from what I understand, that is exactly what the GoTech is doing. And this is actually a product that we make here. And as we get over to the vehicle over there, I have Jim Gale standing by to talk to us about the GoTech. He is the mastermind behind this thing. This is a dongle that you can hook up via Bluetooth to your smartphone to pull both codes and data information, live data. So why don't we go over there now and see what Jim has to say about our GoTech, and I'll leave this one here. We have one hooked up already. Uh, see what he has to say and you know, talk to the brains behind this thing. So, all right, let's go. All right, hey Jim, thanks for joining right, me today. Thanks man, thanks, good to be all here. Right. So I just, you heard me over there just talking a little bit about GoTech, I probably butchered it. So let's talk to the mastermind here and, and see what you got to say about it. You betcha. You know guys, put things in perspective. I mean, I, Mike and I both worked in the shop and just to keep things clear here, we're not trying to sell anything, but what's really important is to understand what's coming down the line for us and what maybe makes our job work easier. Yeah. Uh, we're both flat raters, we understand what, it, what time means, time means money, got to keep moving. So that's what this device is about. Now obviously there's more of these on the market but this one was designed by technicians for technicians and that was me I mean I'm a technician to design this thing so that I can use it to make money that's what this is all about okay but that's, you know being that it's designed by technicians that's not the only unique aspect that this offers over absolutely said other products absolutely not what, what this thing is able to do for us and there may be products out there better uh, there's definitely products a whole lot worse than ours but what's important to me is, is we can just delve into information that we need to diagnose true drivability problems and that that's, happens very quickly with this too, right? Absolutely. So let's talk through it. Here's what we do. This has got a, what's called a dongle. A dongle plugs into the data link connector. It communicates via Bluetooth. It works both with tablets, works both with phones, iOS, Android. So you're pretty much safe no matter what you're carrying around. Cool. What you're also able to do with this thing is you're able to pull down information. So now we'll go through a few bits of this thing. We'll start the car up here in a minute, but let's talk through this first. Yeah. Number one, I'm able to give you 16 PIDs or 16 pieces of information. So okay. I'm going to give you oxygen sensors, mass airflow sensors, things that we need to see to diagnose a true drivability the, problem. The important things, you know, just that brief look into looking through the glass here of, of the important things we need to see. Absolutely, absolutely. The other thing we're able to do is pull trouble codes. We can see current, we can see pending, we can get freeze frame information, we can email that information. So put this into perspective. Service rider, he's trying to estimate the amount of time that you need in the shop to diagnose a problem. Sure. He's able to plug into this car, he's able to pull the uh, pending codes, the current codes, the freeze frame information, and he can email that back into a shop. He can print this thing out, carry it to a technician, and say, okay, what do we need to diagnose this thing? Sure. Communication issues, yeah, obviously we're going to be spending some time on it. You know, if it's just saying an open sensor or open circuit on a, say, throttle position sensor, uh, you know, we could diagnose that in a fairly You're short right. period of time. What about, um, like a lot of newer cars, you know, they're getting check engine lights on and simple reflashes and that kind of thing take care of them. Absolutely. So let, maybe let's, before we jump ahead to the TSBs and and recalls. Let's okay. just start with. Let's talk about. Let's talk about. Sorry, we got visitors. Let, let, let's talk about what we okay. can do also with the trouble code information because okay. what we're pulling with trouble code information is is the trouble code description. But what really takes us beyond that, we're able to get the code set criteria. Now, if a trouble code sets, it sure be nice to know why it's well, set. Exactly. What were the operating conditions? Heavy load, uh, deceleration, cold motor, hot motor. We're going to get all this right. stuff with the code set information. We're also able to get five possible causes for each trouble code that sets. So it's it's going to give us at least a thought process as to where we should go. This information was created by technicians using lots of resources, wow. including our hands-on, to yeah. create this deep information. So it's good stuff, okay? Let's go back into our the TSBs and recalls. Mike okay. kind of touched on this before. Yeah. You know, so many cars on the road today, they got these drivability issues. And, you know, before we start digging in and getting our hands dirty and hooking up scan tools, you know, it's, it's a pretty smart idea to be looking at TSBs and recalls to see is it just simply we need to do a reflash. A car's got 80,000 miles. As things wore out, maybe a reflash is required to get the transmission to shift correctly or the sure. engine ignition timing or valve timing to be right where it needs to be under that operating condition. So TSB 
fees and recalls, we're giving it to you based on the VIN off of this vehicle. So it's per vehicle TSB recall information. So once again, good stuff. So it'll give us the recall information. It can't do the reflashing itself, but it'll at least tell us if there's a recall concerning a reflash. Absolutely, correct. Awesome. Absolutely correct. That's really handy. Last thing we're able to do with this thing is we're able to pull up smog information. You know, if a customer's going in for a smog test, um, it sure be nice to know if the vehicle is ready to roll. Um, okay. Check engine light's not on, but that doesn't mean this thing is ready to go. So this will be able to tell us if we're ready to go pass a smog test. That information is loaded in here. Once again, you can email that information right to wow. either your customer or to the technician or into the shop so you got it for your records. Sure. Well, that's awesome because a lot of times, you know, I was came from a Ford garage. You fix, you fix a Ford and it sets that P1000 code, nothing's set, everything, yep, everything has to kind of go through its relearns and everything. So if the customer were to come back, say a week later or something, they say, okay, can I go through emissions with this car now? Maybe they don't want to take it there and, and possibly fail again. Service writer or the tech hooks it up and says, okay, your monitors are passed, you're good to go. Absolutely. So good stuff. Wow. We want to fire the engine up? Let's do it. Let's take Let's a look at some information here. All right. So we got here a 2002. Z06 Corvette to uh, show some information on, and uh, let's see what we can show. All right, you ready? Here we go. Now, keep in mind, we are operating Bluetooth, so there's gonna be a little bit of a lag time. Let's face it, with a scan tool, you're not getting live data in itself either. So you're going to have some lag time, but once again, we're trying to diagnose a problem. This is not a replacement for an $8,000 scan tool. This is something that's the tool that we're going to use to try to make up some time in the shop while we're working. So let's take a peek. Hopefully you can see. So what I'm looking at here is timing advance. Once again, that's not camshaft advance, that's ignition timing okay. advance. Once again, good information. I mean, if we're going to be checking, uh, say, mass airflow sensors, we want to do a total load test on this vehicle, it should be nice to know what the engine's computer is doing to this engine. Yeah. Oxygen sensors, bank one, bank two, pre and post. If you've got a vehicle, just like a full function scan tool, if you've got a vehicle that's running an air fuel ratio sensor, um, in this particular case, it's not going to show up. Um, not all scan tools will show that information, but most of them will at least give you the voltage range that it's operating at. Okay. Unfortunately, because this is running through generic information, you're not going to see that number. So well, keep that in mind. Speaking of generic information, you know, I was talking about generic codes earlier. Will the GoTech pull manufacture specific codes? Absolutely. Good question. You know, a lot of these that are on the market, they're going to give you trouble codes, they're going to give you trouble code descriptions, but it's just based off of the generic EPA numbers right. that don't have factory specific information. This wow. creates factory specific trouble code information. So in other words, if you've got a P1492 in a vehicle, sure. this has got that information built into it. That's super handy. This has got a database with over 4 million lines of information. So it's loaded, lots of good stuff for you. Cool. Okay. All right. All right, so we've got it here. We're looking at oxygen sensors, miles driven since code set. Yeah. Page one, we actually got cooling temperature. We got vehicle speed, okay. intake air temperature, engine RPMs. Throttle position based off of a percentage. That's the way the computer's looking at it. Sure. <laughs> I'm standing in the wrong angle here. <laughs> we're going to the last page. We're looking at mass airflow sensors. Okay. Short term and long term, all the way through. Once wow. again, if you're diagnosing problems, you've got to know short term, long term. Exactly. This is going to give you that information. Wow, that's actually really handy. I mean, th that's really the information that you want to look at. Just doing a quick, quick look at the information. Absolutely. Absolutely. Smog test. I just pulled it up. Smog test results passed, and it's got all the parameter information. In other words, which monitors are running on this particular wow. vehicle. It's going to give you pass or fail. So once again, good information. Let me jump over to the trouble code page. No trouble code set in this particular right. vehicle. But we've got pending codes, we've got start codes, and we can show freeze frame information. And we have the ability to email that information if required. And lastly, let's go to that TSB information. It's loading the TSBs, I can get TSBs, and I can also get recalls on this particular vehicle. Wow. Once again, a wealth of information. We're diagnosing problems, it's where I'm gonna start. I don't wanna get my hands dirty until I know what's going on with the vehicle. Exactly, you need a direction to go, and remember, when you pull codes, that's all you're getting is a direction to go. This can help with that, but it can get, go even further. Really. Absolutely, absolutely. Without having to you know, take out your full function scan tool, take it from the guy who's working with it in the shop. Correct. You can carry this around in your pocket, and good to go. Good to go. All right, so the dongle, where, 
if anybody's interested, where can you get this thing? Uh, dongle. Uh, we're currently selling this on Amazon. Uh, prices vary a little bit. We're under 100 bucks. So wow. maybe you want to hang out. Prices are dropping. Actually, right now we got a huge sale going on. So uh, go for it. I'm not trying to sell you anything, but at the same time. For a tool that's a uh, flat rater, uh, good information. Yeah, yeah, and just one other thing with the updates on here. What do updates cost? Updates are free. You pay the price once, no matter what we do going forward, you're not going to pay an additional update. It's all there for you. Pay once, never changes. Awesome. All right, well, good. thanks, Jim. All right, I'm thanks, gonna man. I'm going to go over to this uh, 13 Taurus here and awesome. do, some, uh, do some more data. Our full function scan tool is going to pull, I don't know, a couple hundred PIDs maybe. Probably. So uh, I'm going to head over there. So thanks there again. Go. All right, take care. All righty. Hey Fritz. Hey Mike. All right, so uh, we have our 2013 Taurus here. That's correct. Uh, this is the two liter EcoBoost in this one. And I see you have our Varus all hooked up already. Yep, it's here. everything's ready to go. Awesome, so should we uh, go ahead and dive right into it? Look That's at some right. data. Let me go start it so we can get on it. All right, I will be right back. Let's take a look at what's going on here. All right, I had to switch it manually, but I still okay. have no sound. All right, it looks like our sound's working, so it just might not be coming through the headset. All right, so we got this thing started up now. Great. Yep. All right. Go ahead and get over here. Can, uh, if, if you guys aren't able to hear us, throw a comment in and just let me know. Um, all right, so we have right now on the screen here is all of our, I guess this is our main menu for the engine computer. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go ahead and switch over to that camera, we can take a look at our options here on the uh, on the main menu. So you can see we have a uh, codes menu, data, functional tests, generic function, and Snap-on's troubleshooter. So today we have a lot of options here. Oh, definitely. So today, what we're just going to focus on today is data. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, in future classes, we're going to get to the functional tests and the generic functions and that kind of thing. But for today, we're only going to be talking about engine data. All right, so let's see what we got here. Now, Snap-on is nice, uh, nice enough to organize the data in ways depending on kind of a system diagnostics. Yeah, into small groups. Exactly. So instead of seeing a list with, who knows, 200 PIDs maybe, mm -hmm. they've organized things for EVAP-related PIDs, misfire, variable cam timing data, um, relays, switches, and charging AC data. So just a little bit of everything in there to help you, to, I guess, speed up the diagnostics, speed up the process to get right, there. Simplify and make it faster. Exactly. Okay. So why don't we just start by looking at some of the engine management data here. And uh, as it was loading there, it said this vehicle may not support all PIDs. That's correct. That, whatever the manufacturer allows you to see from the PCM is what that's just telling us. Okay. And now sometimes, like we talked about, a generic, like a snap-on scan tool won't see as much information as the manufacturers. And you ran into that recently, right? That's correct. I was working on a 01 Jeep mm -hmm. Grand Cherokee Laredo. I was only limited to what I could do with my Varus 10, which is a step up from this one. Okay, that's the touchscreen one with the wireless. Exactly. Okay. And uh, I've got a friend that's got a, a DVR3. DRB3, yeah, right? DRB3. Yep, the Chrysler tool. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I have him come over, and we were able to look a little bit more, especially when we're working with the CAM bus uh, oh, okay. data. So it, it helped to find out a little bit more information that I could not get through my Varus. Right. And sometimes, you know, that, that, that one step further is only available yep. on those factory scan tools. Exactly. All right, so in your case, maybe it would pay to eventually someday invest in a factory scan tool. If right? I worked more with Chrysler, yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, so let's look at the data we have up on the screen here. We have a whole bunch of different stuff. Everything from absolute load to barometric pressure to the engine runtime, engine cranking, engine load. It's a lot of information to process. Yes, it is. Um, you can see we have three different barrel PIDs, which is interesting. The scan tool's pulling the barrel information three different ways from the PCM. We're seeing barrel as a voltage reading, barrel as a frequency or hertz reading, and barrel as a PSI reading. Mm -hmm. So for whatever reason, Ford decided to give us three different ways to look at barrel. Exactly. So nice to have. Uh, as we scroll down through our list here, you can see things like the engine speed at 7, 778, 777 in RPM. You can compare that against the desired, so we're right where we need to be for mm -hmm. that. Um, and now there's 
just a ton of information here. We're not going to be covering all the information in depth today. This is just kind of a broad overview of what you have access to and what you can actually see. As we move forward here in future classes, we're going to be talking more specifically about fuel trims and oxygen sensors, barometric pressure, engine load. We're going to kind of break each thing down into its own diagnostic and exactly. its own, uh, essentially its own class. So as we move forward, we'll get into this stuff even deeper. But today, it's just kind of a generalized overview. Just what's coming down the turnpike for you guys. Exactly. So as we scroll down through our data here, you'll see we have grill shutter position. So this, this car, being an EcoBoost motor, has shutters in the front of the grill mm -hmm. that'll move in position depending on airflow and aerodynamics. Right, and that's actually relatively new for the automotive yeah, industry. It is. So they're just doing that for fuel economy, right. and so you would open the shutters if the engine needs to be staying cool and maybe close them to get better aerodynamics over the right. hood. So you're able to see you know, the uh, actual position and if there's any errors in that. And then we get down to things like intake air temp sensor, NOx sensor, MAP sensor, all your, your more common, common things. Um, one thing, actually two things I wanted to talk about on this side here is fuel trim status being closed loop. Mm -hmm. That way you know the vehicle's actually entering into closed loop or open loop if it's stuck there, either right. way. And we'll talk about that during our fuel trim class we're gonna do. That's right. And then also engine cranking and crank fueling disabled. Do you want to talk a little bit about that crank fuel disabled, the de-choke option right here? Yes, that uh, <clears throat> actually, that's also new, mm -hmm. especially if you got a vehicle that uh, is flooded sure. and you want to step on a, you know, you're supposed to step on a throttle to cut the fuel to the injectors yeah. in order to clear it out. Clear flood mode, right? Right. If uh, for some reason the customer's tried and it keeps flooding it mm -hmm. and you talk to them and try to get it to do it, I always uh, tell them, well, maybe you got too much carpet underneath. Some sure. people that like to put extra carpet and won't in, uh, allow the TP to shut it off. Okay. So that's one way of looking at it. All right. So, you know, maybe we would see this read yes here also if security exactly. or something would be disabling it. Right. It's possible. Right. You may not have a, a, a security light on and maybe disabling it. Maybe the TP's got an issue too or the, the throttle positioning sensor. Potentially. All right, so let's look at some of the other options we have here. I'm going to exit out of this data screen, and let's bring up, uh, let's look at variable cam timing data. Mm -hmm. Again, vehicle may not support all PIDs, so maybe if you had a Ford IDS, it would maybe have a little bit more information in there. Right. So here on this screen, we got, I don't know, maybe 15 or so PIDs there talking about what's related to variable cam timing. Now, this is stuff that's been determined by snap-on as being relevant to that. Now, is it everything you maybe need? Maybe not. Maybe not, no. But according to what the software engineers decided, this is what they think is necessary. The good thing about it is it gives you the des desire and uh, what's actually exactly. on there. So you can balance them both out and see if you got a problem. Right. So you can see, as we look at this, you can see the intake camshaft desired and the intake camshaft actual and same thing for the exhaust. So you're able to compare those and make sure mm -hmm. that they're within the spec. That's if right. you were having an intermittent issue, you could track that and watch that. So now we kind of see the numbers jumping a lot here. And that, Jim had kind of talked about that before when he talked about scan tools not actually showing us live data. It's showing us buffer data or data right. that's been processed. Um, scan tools operate typically at a four hertz refresh rate. So four times per second, the scan tools information is adjusting or uh, giving us new information. That's right. We're actually seeing the data was processed mm -hmm. four or five, six seconds before that. So when we talk about live data, it's not actually truly live. Right. It's a buffered data. And maybe sometime in the future when the PCM's communication rates get faster, our scan tool communication rates could get faster. Mm -hmm. Then we could com uh, communicate instantaneously. But That's right. right now it's four times per second. It's a lot faster it used to be. Yeah, exactly. All right, so I did want to talk about the question now. Okay. So the question was asked, uh, mode six data is only for automotive engineers and a technician should never have to go there. Was well, that true? No, it's not true. And we know that because why? Because we use mode six to 
looking forward, especially with Fords, for Fords, misfires. Yeah. Old Fords could be misfiring all day long and never set a code. Exactly, yeah. You see that check engine light yeah. flash on an on-ramp or something, there might not even be a misfire code stored. That's right. But you would go into mode six data then to find that counter and find, that, find out what cylinder's exactly. actually misfiring. So technician A is incorrect. Technician B says the scan tool's live data always shows exactly as what the module is reading from the input or sensor. Well, we kind of just talked about that, that it's buffered data. That's right. So that's kind of um, already incorrect, but let's take it one step further. Right now on the screen, we have intake air temp, 87 degrees. Mm -hmm. So it's pulling in air 87 degrees right now. Let's see what happens when we unplug that sensor. Sure. I'm going to go ahead, unhook it here, and after a, about a second, it's dropped now to negative 40. Right. Well, obviously, the air coming into the car right now is not negative 40 degrees, so at this point, the scan tool is lying to us and giving us false information. That's true. It's false information right now, unless yeah. we had a broken wire or a bad sensor. Sure, sure. So, according to the PCM software, it's saying in an open circuit problem, it's going to read negative 40. Right. And do you think that negative 40 degrees is there for a reason? Oh, definitely. Uh, it's, rather, it's better to have a rich running engine than a lean running engine. Sure. It works true for winter, because for startup, mm -hmm. and it works true for summer, because if they, you had a positive temperature yeah. during the summer, you would be running extra lean and high temperatures. Say intake air temp uh, faulted at 300 degrees. Right. Well, then you would run more lean, the engine could run lean and actually yeah. And good luck starting and it. Knock and all kinds of crazy That's things. Right. So the software engineers probably threw that in there as a, a failure mode and something for us to look for. But that information tells us the scan tool is lying to us. That's right. And actually, this goes one step further. And I'm going to go ahead and plug this back in. And let's shut the car off. Okay. This, this goes one step further on newer cars even. Um, I've seen it on Kia specifically where you can unplug, say, a map sensor or something and still run into um, a map sensor reading. So the scan tool, you unplug the sensor, you'll still get a map sensor voltage reading even though it's unplugged because the computer's looking at throttle position, it's looking at mass airflow, it's looking at all these other parameters to kind of infer or calculate the map sensor reading. So watch out. It, it gets trickier as we get to newer vehicles. That's right. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to duplicate that with this car, but maybe in the future we'll be able to have one in here that'll do that. Um, so scan tool data can lie to you. So technician B is also incorrect. That's right. So the only answer is that's correct is uh, D, neither technician. So it uh, looks like we have a ton of comments here today. Yeah, it looks like everybody decided to come out and take a look at the video. Yeah, so let's start it back up at the top and see what everybody, uh, everybody's got to say. And for those of you who answered Technician D, Glenn, if you want to bring up my email on the screen, send me out an email with your t-shirt size and your mailing address, and uh, I'll get a shirt sent out to you right away. So it looks like uh, a couple people are coming on here. Um, we got Terry and Dave came on and said hi, that they're ready. Rojo, I believe your name is, you came on and were asking about that Cadillac, and I said to send me an email. Ter uh, Terrence Naraki says, good music. <laughs> Stuz Stuzman says, hello. <laughs> Dave wants us to throw a scan tool on our camera and see if we're getting any sort of diagnostic <laughs> codes. <laughs> well, it's possible, who yep. knows? Um, so we got that all taken care of though. Uh, a lot of answers of D, a couple B answers in here. Uh, Drew came on and said, hi, Mike. And he asked, will the GoTech record? That's a great question. Yeah. I'm going to have to ask Jim and uh, get back to you guys. I'm going to use that in our Tech Connect episode in a couple weeks when I do that. Drew, I'll answer your question there. I'm going to get the uh, information right from the master. Um, Hayward's Automotive came on and said he uses a Varus Edge, but he also has the GoTech that he won. Um, remember a few months yeah. ago, he was using GoTech. And uh, he says he uses his GoTech. Uh, excuse me, his GoTech for the initial test drive with the customer's vehicle. And uh, he says, you can't beat this for the price and it's a Wells product so you know it's good. Awesome. Well, thank you, Haywards Automotive. I appreciate that. We appreciate the feedback. And uh, last comment here, Drew came on and he said, can bus. That would be a great topic for a show. And that's actually Definitely. something we do plan to show here in the future is uh, diagnosing and looking at the can bus. 
So, all right, I think that's about it for today. Yes. Kind of running a little bit late today with mm -hmm. our <laughs> with our late start, <laughs> but again, we apologize for that. We had some technical difficulties today, it yep. happens. This is the tip of the iceberg, guys. Yes, Sti exactly. You know, that's so we have a lot to cover, mm -hmm. and we probably will learn a lot more stuff, especially the newer cars here. Exactly. And so now, going ahead in the future here, our next class is going to be the first week in October on Thursday. As we move into November, guys, we're going to be changing up the schedule just a little bit. We typically do these things four times a day. So noon in Eastern, Central, Mountain, and Pacific. Starting in November, we are only going to be streaming out twice during that day, and that will be during noon during Eastern time mm -hmm. and noon Pacific time. So wherever you guys are, uh, you'll have to catch it in those two time zones. Uh, but that's just where we're going to be moving forward. So was there anything else you wanted to talk about? No, that's it. That's it. All right. Well, that's it for me. So thank you guys for being there. Without you being there, we would not be here. So we appreciate it, and we'll see you guys again next time in the Wells Tech Garage. See you guys later.